Compilers are a large and complex pieces of software and because of that they are a lot of times mystified by the programmers. If you're a software developer I'm sure you know what a compiler is. It's a program which takes some handwritten code and it produces some sort of executable output, which allows the computer to do some actual work with it. We know what a compiler does, but a lot of developers have no idea how it actually works under the hood. Fortunately, we don't need to study GCC or LLVM code bases to get a grasp of the compiler internals. Today let's quickly walk through the source code of a tiny compiler that supports a subset of C and fits in just a couple hundred lines of code. So here's the source code. This project was written by Mark Feely back in 2001. Thanks Mark. Before we begin studying the source, let's try the compiler out. The comments in the file provide a few examples, so let's compile the file. This produced a file called a.out and now let's run a few examples. As you can see the produced binary takes input from standard input and then evaluates it. Now is a good time to mention that this program is not just a compiler but it also includes an ev evaluator which depending on who you ask makes it an interpreter. If you don't know what that means just forget about it, I don't want to confuse you. We're now finally ready to peek inside the file. First, let's scroll through the file to get a high level overview. We can see that the file is made up from four different sections. We have a lexer, parser, code generator and finally a virtual machine. Let's start with the lexer. A lexer iterates through all the symbols in your source code and converts them into a stream of tokens. I modified the source code so that the program spits out what lexer produces. We see that the values map to the corresponding symbols. One symbol represents the identifier, in our case the letter A, then equal sign, then a number, a less than symbol and well you get the idea. When inspecting the source code of the lexer we see that we first initialize a few global variables, namely for the last produced symbol, a possible integer value and a variable name. Then we can see the next symbol function which is called periodically by the parser. So each time the next symbol function is called, Alexa reads a character from standard input, then checks if that character is any of the known signs or if it's literal integer or a variable. When it gets a result, the function returns. Now moving on to the parser. A parser is something that takes tokens produced by the lexer as input and creates something that's called an abstract syntax tree or AST for short. An abstract syntax tree is as the name suggests, a tree-like structure representing the source code. The fact it's a tree allows us to later on walk this structure using recursion pretty naturally. I changed the code in a similar way so we can look at how this structure looks like. So this is how an AST looks like for our simple program. The root node is the program itself and our program has just one expression which sets the value of the variable c into the result of less than operation on two numbers. Now that we understand a bit more what a parser is supposed to do, let's look at its source. The base output is the node type which has a kind, a value and up to three children. Then we have a bunch of functions each of which handles a specific operation. If we scroll down a bit more we can find the program node handler which is an entry point to the parser. Here we create a new program node and call the statement handler and here in the statement handler is where most of the magic happens. Basically we walk through the tokens that Lexer produces and then based on the tokens type we decide which handler to call next. Alright so let's look at the next piece the code generator. A code generator produces a stream of instructions which can either be direct machine code or, as is the case here, a bytecode. If you don't know what bytecode is, it's basically a made up machine code just for our specific virtual machine. So as I mentioned before, we recursively walk the AST and depending on the node type we decide what to do. For example, if a node has a type of CST, which stands for constant, we generate an ipush instruction followed by the value of the variable. The idea is that the virtual machine will read the push instruction and then it will know that it must write the value of the next bytecode to the stack. To get an idea how this bytecode looks like, I hacked the program again. You can see that we produce both codes mentioned earlier. Our compiler is now complete, so now let's move on to the virtual machine. First, we must initialize the stack and then a list of global variables. By the way, in this compiler the variable names are limited to single letter alphabet characters. Then we loop over the stream of bytecode and much like all other sections, we decide on what to do based on the type of the code. 
So for our previous example, we read a code which corresponds to an ipush instruction, so we assign the top value of the stack to the current value of the bytecode array. And then we read the next bytecode and read the instruction again. And then we repeat this until we reach the end of our program. If we scroll down a bit more, we find the main function where we assemble everything together. So we parse the program, then pass the root node of the AST to the generator, we initialize a zeroed array of all possible global variables, and then run the program using our virtual machine. At the end, the program also prints out the evaluated variables, so we can verify the interpreter works. So that's it! Now you know how a compiler works! If you're interested in compilers and interpreters, there are quite a lot of good books available. I can personally recommend writing an interpreter in Go and then also its sequel writing a compiler in Go by Torsten Ball and I also liked Crafting Interpreters by Robert Nystrom. Hopefully you learned something today. I know I did. If you liked the video, please consider liking, subscribing or sharing the video. Thank you for watching and have a good day. Bye!